Well, uh, good evening, good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for thanks for coming tonight. We know that it's uh, it's been a hard hard past couple of week week and a half, and you know, obviously a, a really tough uh, year on everybody. And we wanted to acknowledge that at the beginning because we know that um, you know everybody's been through a lot. Um, you know, we we thought about maybe rescheduling this meeting, but um, you know, we we are recording it, so um, you know, anybody that wasn't able to make it will be able to enjoy it, you know, uh, revisit it later. Um, but, um, you know, again, thank you all for coming. For those of you who I haven't met before, my name's Kurt Getman. I'm a, uh, a project manager with, with Art in Public Places. Um, I'm, I'm, my uh, co-host tonight is uh, also a, uh, um, a project manager, Alex Herrera. Um, we also tonight have uh, AIPP um, project manager, uh, Sue Lamb. Um, we also have uh, a few uh, project managers from Public Works who are, are involved with the, uh, the construction of the four uh, AFD EMS stations that we're going to be talking about this evening. Um, Michelle uh, um, Noriega and Burton Jones. Oh, and I almost, uh, almost forgot, we also have uh, a marketing specialist, uh, Penny Rodriguez, with us. So a lot of staff tonight. If you have, if you have hard questions, we should be able to cover all of our bases here. So you can get to the final boss. I think Sue's gonna be the final boss if you can stump all of the other city, city staff specialists. So um, we're gonna be covering some uh, general information. Uh, if you could go to the next slide, Alex. Um, we're gonna be covering some general information about the AIPP program here um, shortly, uh, followed by a background on, on the floor AFD EMS uh, public art opportunities. We're going to be using a lot of acronyms because the city employees love to throw a bunch of, of letters at you. Um, when, when we say AFD, we're talking about Austin Fire Department and EMS Emerg Emergency Medical Services, uh, Austin Travis County Emergency Medical Services. So um, if, if, if we ever say something that doesn't quite make sense, just, just ask for an explanation in the chat. But uh, we'll, we'll try to not, um, not stump everybody or confuse people with a, with a bunch of city terms for things. Um, but the, uh, we'll, we'll tell you about the different stations and the opportunities for creating public art at each. Uh, a little bit about uh, applying to these calls. We use a website called publicartist.org. And then we've reserved time at the end of the meeting for, for question and answer. Um, if you want to go ahead and put questions in the chat, we're going to be saving all those to the end. Um, we'll be we'll be reading those aloud and and answering them in the order that we receive them. Um, but um, yeah, I think we're uh, I think we're ready for the next slide, Alex. Great, sorry, I keep muting myself. Um, and just a reminder to everyone that we are recording. So we're asking everyone to uh, just turn off your um, cameras and keep yourself muted just so we have the cleanest quality on the recording. Um, so just kind of some general Zoom housekeeping before we get started. Um, I feel like a lot of us have been on Zoom, so this might be stuff you already know, but um, uh, well, as Kurt said, we are going to be answering uh, questions uh, that are submitted into the chat at the end of the meeting um, or second half of the meeting. So uh, to access the chat, to, an to enter your questions, uh, you can um, click uh, the chat button at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you're on your phone, you'll have to click participants first and then that will give you access to the chat. Um, as well. And when you're chatting, make sure that you're chatting to everyone so um, all the participants can see all the questions and, and all the staff can see it too. Um, just so we, we make sure we don't miss anything. Um, and if you're having any technical difficulties, feel to, free to um, message uh, Kurt or myself as well. Um, I will go on to the next slide. Oops, I didn't do that. Yeah. There we go. So this is an incredibly simplified uh, org chart of, of, of where art and public places sort of fits into the city hierarchy. Um, the city of Austin, uh, maybe it's easier to talk about these backwards, but uh, the art and public places program 
is, is a program of uh, the Cultural Arts Division, which is a, um, a division within the Economic Development Department of the city of Austin. And I, I really wish our organization was, was, was this streamlined and clean. <laughs> it could hover on this for a while and I can pretend, but no, uh, we got a lot to get through. So maybe we should go to the next one. Um, so AIPP was started in 1985 and is one of the, or is the oldest program of its kind in Texas. Um, we're funded through an ordinance that was actually brought forth by a citizens initiative and it dedicates 2% of eligible bond related capital improvement project budgets, um, which I'll explain a little bit more in a bit. Um, but it dedicates that 2% to the creation of permanent artwork in, at, or near that project construction site. Um, so capital improvement projects can include things like the creation and renovation of libraries, parks, um, bridges, and uh, for example, the reason we're here today, uh, fire and emergency medical services stations. Um, AIPP staff manages the creation of new artworks uh, for the collection. And we currently have over 325 um, plus public artworks in over 150 facilities around the city. Um, AAPP staff also manages repairs, donations, and loans to the city collection. And here's some examples of works in the collection. Um, as you can see, there's a diversity of form, material, scale, and a mix of exterior and interior pieces. Um, most, if not all of these, I think were, were tied to capital improvement projects, um, like Alex was talking about with, uh, with the now current 2% um, ordinance for, for um, construction budgets on, on city, on city uh, buildings uh, and, and eligible projects uh, that go towards the creation of artwork. Uh, if you'd like to know more about how AIPP is funded, uh, the ordinance or, or the work that we do, you can go to austincreates.com and navigate to the Art and Public Places page and, and there's a plethora of information there. Also, if you're interested in, in finding out more about individual pieces in the collection, the in, entire collection is online at publicartarchive.org. Uh, publicartarchive.org, it's pretty cool. You can if there's something you drive by and you've always wondered the backstory on it, you can you can find it on a map and, and find out more. Um, and always uh, feel free to reach out to us by phone or email if you have if you have questions about things. Uh, Alex and I will have our contact information uh, at the end of the presentation. So now for a little background on uh, Austin Fire Department or AFD um, and the Austin Travis County Emergency Medical Services uh, or EMS um, departments. Um, those are our sponsor departments for these four public art opportunities um, that we're discussing today. Uh, here are some things to, to know about the Austin Fire Department. Um, and this is also listed in the application in RFQ. Um, so AFD serves over 840,000 people in a 308 square mile area in Austin. Um, there 1,110 employees respond to more than 85,000 calls a year. They provide a multitude of services, including operations and support services, um, aircraft, firefighting and rescue, maintenance jobs, medical operations, and uh, a lot more. Um, and AFD is on the cutting edge of technology and training. Uh, next, there's the Austin Travis County Emergency Medical Services. Um, they serve uh, over 1,300 square miles, um, including all of Travis County and parts of Williamson and Hayes counties. Um, and uh, in 2015, EMS responded to over 120,000 calls um, in that service area. As with AFD, EMS is responsible for providing a multitude of services, including operations and support services, cadet training, emergency management preparedness, um, professional standards, and again, a lot, a lot more. Um, they are two separate uh, but complementary entities, um, AFD and EMS, um, and they frequently share spaces um, in the same stations. Um, and this is the case with all the stations that we're going to be talking about today. So 
So here's a list of the, uh, the stations where we have public art opportunities uh, at this time for, for this call. Uh, the first two listed here are new stations. Del Valley was completed summer 2020 and uh, Travis Country is currently under construction. Um, uh, and those have, uh, because they're new stations, they have higher construction budgets. So the, the budget to create artwork um, is 135,000 for Del Valley, Moore's Crossing and 118,000 for Travis, uh, Travis Country. We'll talk more in a little bit about, um, um, I'm sure you have questions about the, uh, what, you know, what the artist budget entails. It's, it's uh, design, um, fabrication, installation, insurance, there's a lot of different things that go into that. We, we'd be putting the cart before the horse to talk in, too in depth about um, what that is. Um, because, you know, if once an artist is on contract, you would have the ability to, um, you know, to really figure out, um, you know, how to how to work within that budget and, and create artwork. Um, the uh, the third and fourth station listed on this list are renovations. Um, uh, and, and the reason that some of these have have two different numbers, um, the, uh, the Austin Fire Department has one numbering system for their stations, and in the EMS has a, has a separate one. So you'll see a lot as we go through these slides, um, stations with two numbers on them. That's what's going on there. But the, uh, um, the, the renovations have budgets of 42,000 and 70,000 accordingly. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, this first one here is, is uh, you can see Del Valley with the uh, with the two different numbers up there. Um, this is in, in District 2. Um, this has a, uh, um, again, was completed in summer of 2020. It has uh, detached vehicle storage, four east facing bays, 11 sleeping rooms, a rest area, uh, a gym, a grilling area, kitchen and dining areas. Um, you can see that there's uh, some, some nice landscaping there. This, this is, um, sits on a really nice, uh, well landscaped, um, plot, and I believe that there's uh, um, uh, an arboretum of, of trees nearby. It's it's uh, um, you can maybe Michelle could tell us more about that. Did, Michelle, can you uh, tell us a little bit more about the grounds around El Valley? Uh, sure. Um, it's actually I, I believe it's it's actually sitting on six acres there. Um, yeah, flat ground. Um, and uh, as you see some of the landscaping, there's natives, um, but they also have a fig farm and a pecan grove um, and a little herb garden. As you can imagine, um, a lot of the people who work out of there, it's essentially they're, they're living out of it. So, you know, part of it is to make them um, as comfortable as they can be. And, and if there's an opportunity to, you know, have some healthy fruit and help their their nutrition then that's a win as well great it looks like burton might want to chime in too Did you no i just opened my mic in case i needed to okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> well um yeah this one uh for the most part with these opportunities we're probably talking about exterior public facing artwork um you know th there's there's you know, we, we here again, we would probably be putting the cart before the horse to, to talk about design or anything of that nature. But, um, but there, there's, um, you know, we, we want the artwork to be able to be seen by the public, um, preferably 24 seven. So um, with with this opportunity, there's there's um, for, with this particular station, there's a lot of opportunity to create something on the grounds, you know, six acres to work with. There's um, you know, this would be a really great one to do something sculptural or maybe land-based or, you know, something of, of that nature. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and this is, uh, this is the, uh, the site that's currently under construction with a, um, a uh, uh, target completion date of July uh, 2021. Artist budget of $118,000. This is in District 8. 
uh, kind of the Oak Hill area, kind of where uh, past Mopac, where, where 290 and 71 are still running together. Um, if you're in BK, you've gone too far, but this is out, out that direction. Um, but this is a, uh, um, here again, another combined station with, with both fire and EMS under the same roof. Um, is there anything that you can tell us additionally about, about this station that's interesting, Burton or Michelle? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and step in on this. Um, I forgot to mention for De Del Valley and Travis Country as well, the, these are both green buildings. So, De sorry, uh, Del Valley um, is a Austin Energy green building rated building and Travis Country will be a lead uh, green building rated building. Um, and Travis Country actually has a training stair uh, for firefighters for their use. So um, this, this is definitely a training facility. And, and I do wanna add that these, these two stations were, were um, put on a, a priority list to address you know, sort of gaps in, in coverage. As Austin continues to grow, um, you know, these um, fire and EMS have, have identified areas that, that were in, in need of, of stations. So, um, you know, the, the public, in a lot of cases, the public has been very keen to see these stations built because, you know, they're, they're providing um, incredibly important um, first responder services, um, you know, to, to, in these two cases, you know, um, communities that are a little bit more on the, on the edge of the city, out, outside the, the city center. So with response time being incredibly important, um, both these stations are, are addressing important needs. Next slide. All right, and I'll take over from here. Uh, the next two stations that we're gonna talk about are the renovation stations. So uh, they are existing and they're being renovated. Um, so the first of these is AFD station one, EMS station six. It is located um, in district nine. Um, and it's actually downtown on Fifth Street, very close to the convention center. Um, the original station for this site actually opened in 1938, so it's pretty historic, um, or historical building, um, more or less. Um, it has four, B, four bays, um, it's two stories. Um, it also currently houses the Austin Fire Museum, um, which features things like um, historical and current uniforms, photographs, memorabilia um, from firefighters over the last couple of centuries. Um, uh, so the renovations that the station will be undergoing um, include uh, extensive building system code and accessibility upgrades. Um, uh, the images shown here uh, show on the top how the site currently looks, and then you can see the renovation rendering on the bottom. Um, the white exterior part, um, and Michelle, feel free to correct me or like add on to anything I'm saying um, if I don't quite get anything right, but um, the exterior part is, uh, sorry, the white part of the building um, is the new construction. Um, the brick uh, more or less is the uh, original part of the building. Um, and then you can note that there is this red red sculpture in the rendering, but just know that's a, that's a placeholder for um, an eventual um, art and public places art piece. Um, that's not necessarily like the site that the artwork needs to be at. Um, uh, again, uh, can um, oh, cool. I, I just want to add a couple? Yeah, uh, so I, I, I did want to share that this building, um, it being downtown is actually uh, one of the busiest, if not the busiest station in the nation. Uh, so it's a very important facility for fire and EMS. Um, it will be actually housed while it's being constructed. Um, so they're going to work uh, in phases on it. Um, and uh, the, the top is the existing, um, as it is on the National Historic Registry, we, we are not altering that facade. Actually, what you see in the image below is the addition that's on the back side to it. So um, the brick is existing. Uh, as Alex pointed out, and you'll see some of the detail in, in the rendering reflected, um, and uh, and the the white stairwell elevator addition is for accessibility purposes, 
And um, if you're wondering why it's, it doesn't have, it doesn't echo uh, the art moderne um, of the original facility, it is to not upstage the original building. And, and that is the um, philosophy behind the uh, design for the addition. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. Also, can I interject this is Burton? In the rendering, just please ignore the red sculptural object there because obviously that's put there by the architects and it's not to influence you whatsoever as to what the art might be in the future. Very well said, Burton. Yes, actually the reason he chose that is because that was the easiest thing to duplicate in the rendering software. Awesome, thank you. So, such important points. Thank you for, for those, uh, Michelle and Burton. Those are great points. Um, and then I wanted to mention something Michelle had, you and I had talked about. Um, there is, a, this is this is the station when there there is the possibility for maybe an interior tube D piece, um, just because, let me go to the next slide. Um, there is a uh, interior area that is um, probably gonna be lit at night and it's visible from um, the, the outside. Um, so this is an option, uh, but again, it's not, uh, you know, this isn't a guaranteed spot for a 2D artist. It's, it's just a, one of the more flexible spaces. And again, we do like to focus on work that is like in the most publicly accessible area so, so the public can see it most easily. Um, and um, I was gonna add to this. Uh, so we're working on, on this station and likewise the rest of the block is being renovated by Parks and Rec. Um, so even though this is the, the back side of the station, it's now essentially gonna face um, the new o, o. Henry Museum renovations and uh, the Brush Square project. So they're actually creating a, a very nice outdoor space over there. And this back end of the building will become you know, more visible to the public. Great, thank you, Michelle. Uh, and then finally, our fourth station. Um, this is also a renovation, uh, actually a rebuild um, of, a, of a, an existing station, um, AFD 22, EMS 12. It's located in District 3. Um, and uh, it originally opened in 1975. Uh, it has two bays. Um, I, I, Michelle or Burton, is there anything else you wanna add about uh, this station in particular? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and talk about it. This is also a, a lead project as well. Um, and uh, on East Riverside, um, the, this one, you know, I, I, we can't, we don't have all the drawings to show you right now, but uh, there, there's actually a lot of really nice trees around the building. And so it's really set up floor plan wise for the um, first responders to be able to enjoy their downtime among nature. Uh, so that's kind of one of the themes that was brought with the design. Um, and, and it'll be evident with, the, um, th with their workout area as well. So um, it, it's, it's um, a lot ho hom a homelier feel, even though it's, it's definitely very commercial. Um, and yeah, it, it is very much the same same um, requirements as the other stations, just a little smaller. Thanks, Michelle. Um, and I also wanted to mention for this station, um, there is an existing AAPP artwork uh, by artist Rachel Wolfson Smith. Um, it's an interior piece. Um, it's a uh, I think a mural on panels or painting on panels um, and that'll be removed from, from the station while it's undergoing construction and put back in. Um, that shouldn't affect, you know, the artists assigned to the station too much. It's something that you'll want to be aware of um, or, or that artist will want to be aware of. And I just wanted to say before we move on, like we are, ta we are talking about like these buildings a lot, um, but just as a reminder, like the, the request uh, that we have out um, to you guys as artists is your request for qualification. So we're not expecting any of you to be thinking about, you know, what you would be constructing or like, we don't want, we don't want you guys to have to submit any proposals or to submit any proposals for, um, for, for the application. You're just submitting your qualifications as an artist. Um, and, uh, 
Um, but, but we're kind of going over uh, some more information about the stations just so it doesn't feel quite so nebulous. Um, you know, you can feel more comfortable about like what you're, what you're applying to as you guys are, are putting together your applications. And here's a map showing you where everything is. Um, as you can see, they're pretty spread out from each other. Um, and if, if, you, if when you're filling out your um, letter of interest in the application, we'll talk more about what the components of the application are. You know, if, if you have, uh, you know, a history with any of these stations, personal history, or, um, or you live in one of these communities, that's always good things to mention so that the, uh, so that the folks doing the judging know that, um, you know, uh, that they can, they can, they're not just looking at your portfolio, but also getting a sense of, of, uh, you know, any kind of connection that you might have with any of the stations. All right, project goals. So AIPP is seeking artists to create artworks for these stations that will reflect the mission of the Austin Fire Department and the Austin Travis County Emergency Medical Services to, quote, create safer communities through prevention, preparedness, and effective emergency response. Um, I'm not going to read through the rest of the project goals, but they are listed on the screen here, and um, they're also on the application as well. And uh, for the selected artist, uh, for artists, you'll have the opportunity to uh, spend time with uh, with fire and EMS staff to get a, a sense of of the work that they do, um, and uh, you know. Um, then in, engage the local community uh, to find out a little bit more about who they are and you know maybe their relationship with with, with the station and um, um, and then uh, take all of that information and and have it help inform your design and ultimately the final artwork. Um, this uh, the artwork on this slide is from a project by um, the Thought Barn Artist Collective who who did uh, this is from Onion Creek fire station from, from two years ago with a, with a budget level similar to the ones that, um, that we're talking about for these four stations. Um, this is uh, um, columns uh, of poured concrete. It was poured through um, uh, retired hoses. So um, in, integrally stained and, uh, and it goes along the entrance path there. So it uh, gives you an idea of, of uh, the scale of work that could be done with, uh, with a similar budget. Um, I just, I was going to add this Kurt too, just as a reminder that um, that period that Kurt was mentioning when uh, the selected artist will be kind of uh, researching um, and learning about the AFD and EMS um, uh, employees, uh, those, those first responders, um, they'll be using that reflection, uh, the artist will be using their reflection and the information gathered, gathered during that time to actually inform their design. Um, and same goes for community engagement. We'll be asking the artists to engage with the surrounding community and to use that engagement process to inform the, the, the design that, that they ultimately propose. Um, and, and again, uh, it is really important to kind of give AFD, uh, the fire uh, department and the emergency medical services uh, folks kind of equal weight in your, in your, um, uh, in your process. Um, so uh, go through a couple of things, including el eligibility and process. Um, these, so again, these are uh, four opportunities open to artists who are at least 18 years old and who live in the seven county uh, area uh, surrounding uh, and including Austin. Um, uh, uh, those are, uh, tra that's Travis County and the uh, six uh, counties that touch it. Um, so a jury of five arts professionals uh, plus project advisors uh, will meet to review all the applications that are submitted and recommend uh, an artist and an alternate for each of the four uh, uh, stations. Um, and the evaluation criteria that they'll be using is shown here. Um, the jury will also be asked to uh, center around equity in their selection. Actually, Alex, could you go the other way back to the Onion Creek one? I just remembered something I wanted to um, point out about this one. Um, for the community engagement, um, 
Thought Barn did a, um, uh, a series of workshops with uh, uh, students at a nearby high school and they, uh, they experimented with materials and it was, it was really successful um, community engagement and, and it helped in, inform the ultimate design. Before this, they were really thinking that they were going to be uh, doing something on a fence. But um, when they saw like a lot of the natural inclination of the students and, and their thoughts on, on what art might be at this site, they were all doing freestanding uh, sculptures is how they, they, they interpreted um, you know, potential for our work here. So, you know, you'd be surprised that, you know, even, uh, you know, a room full of 15 year olds could, could you know, meaningfully in, inform your, your public art project. So um, it's, it was an interesting, uh, it, was, it was really great uh, and successful form of community engagement. Community engagement will look different at, at every opportunity. You know, it, it might not look like that. It might be something completely different. And, and if we're still um, social distancing, it may be something completely different yet. But, um, but being able to um, convey, uh, you know, to engage with community uh, is always important um, with public art projects um, such as these. And go back to the back two slides or forward two slides rather. So this is a list of um, the, uh, the, the probable jurors. Um, um, these, these are the folks who have um, committed to, uh, to being members of the, the selection jury. Um, Kip Kobayashi is a, a national level artist whose who's previously work includes a, uh, a fire station. Oscar Alvarado is a San Antonio based artist who also has a um, uh, Fort Worth Fire uh, Department uh, station in his portfolio. Uh, Jimmy Castillo is a uh, um, public art administrator from Houston. Uh, and uh, Susie Gonzalez, I think you know her better than I do, Alex. Can you can tell us a little bit about Susie. Yeah, she's a um, public artist, um, community organizer. Uh, uh, let me look at this. Educator uh, based in San Antonio. Um, mm. She mainly works as part of a duo uh, at, when doing public art, I believe. Uh, Samara Barks is a, is a local artist and, and muralist um, who was a previous Tempo 2D artist. Um, and then uh, the project advisors is a combination of, of primarily city staff. Um, it's, it's folks uh, with, from the fire department, uh, EMS, um, public works, um, some, some AIPD panel liaisons. And then uh, we're, gonna, we're trying to get some arts commissioners from, um, from the districts in which these stations are to, uh, to also uh, help us um, um, you know, round out the, uh, the selection process and, and advise accordingly. Um, just wanted to mention that the city of Austin is also committed to creating uh, more access for viewing, creating, and the decision-making surrounding public art. Um, in order to make that a reality, we are asking all applicants to answer some demographic questions as part of um, their application. Uh, please complete the survey on the uh, application if you're able to. Um, you can also choose prefer not to answer for each question if that's your preference. Here's our, our tentative schedule. Um, you know, we always we always make these things with the best of intentions, and and you know sometimes they, they go a little longer than they're, they're supposed to. Um, the, the immediately most important date to remember, of close, of course, is the, uh, when it, when the, this call closes, April eighth. If if you forget everything else we said, please just remember April eighth, and, and work backwards from there. Um, but that's the uh, the deadline. Um, hopefully, it's it's a relatively easy application. For for you. We'll talk a little bit about, for, for those of you who are first time um, uh, applicants using the publicartist.org system, hang around a little bit afterwards after the Q&A and we'll give you some, some tips on, on how to, how to um, use publicartist.org, get an account set up. Um, but the, uh, um, the next set of dates that's important is uh, that the selection process is taking place in May and potentially uh, also in June. Um, in, in May, the jurors will, will select finalists and in June, um, interviewing those finalists and getting down to um, four recommended artists 
and uh, four applicants or uh, uh, alternates rather. Um, but then uh, there's a uh, um, once uh, once the uh, the recommendations uh, are approved by the IPP panel and Arts Commission, uh, the two higher budget pro actually I think th three of these projects will need to go to council for approval uh, during the month of August, and um, and then in September we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to um, execute the contracts. And, um, and kick things off, um, uh, connect uh, the selected artists with, um, with project staff and, um, and fire and EMS uh, staff and start to figure out uh, what the artwork might be, connect to the community um, and, and get the, really get the ball rolling uh, once, once we start heading into fall um, with a, uh, um, um, a mid-design uh, process occurring late in the year, and uh, final design um, hopefully by uh, early 2022. Again, these are these are tentative dates. Um, the uh, construct just to let you know where things are on the construction side. Dell Valley uh, was was recently completed. Again, Travis Country Station is set is uh, scheduled to be completed this summer. And the, uh, the, the renovation projects are uh, set to be completed uh, summer of next year. Uh, next slide. Um, so this is the second to last slide. So um, if you have any questions that you guys have got ready, start entering them to the chat or start kind of thinking about what questions that you have. Um, but I'm just gonna go over the application uh, process and components. Uh, uh, briefly uh, before we move on to questions. Um, so Austin Art and Public Places accepts all, um, or we, we host all of our calls and, and uh, ask all of our artists to submit their applications through publicartist.org um, to view the application for AFD EMS. Uh, go to uh, publicartist.org forward slash Austin AIPP. That's where all our calls are listed and where all the applications always are. Um, if you've never used publicartist.org before, um, as Kurt mentioned, hang out, hang around a little bit after the Q&A and we'll go into like some, uh, a briefer about that. Um, and just some important uh, or like main parts of the application. Uh, Kurt was mentioning a letter of interest a little bit before. We've actually converted that into some short answer uh, questions for you guys to address as part of your application. Um, and that was just kind of to streamline the process and make it more targeted um, as, uh, you know, um, as you kind of introduce yourself to the jury and the project advisors um, uh, through through answering those questions. Um, I know that, you know, writing a letter of extra interest can be like, really challenging for folks sometimes. So again, we just felt like maybe these questions would be easier and more pointed for you guys to answer. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's, uh, they are listed on the screen. There's spots for you to kind of, you know, bring up if you have any personal connections to the sites, um, if you have any connections to the AFD EMS um, uh, departments at all, um, and then kind of your, your experience working with community, your interest in public art. Um, there's kind of space to talk about all those all those things there. Um, then uh, there's an image section of the application. Uh, we're asking for ten images of uh, works that you've uh, created or been involved in. Um, that doesn't mean, that doesn't have to be uh, 10 unique works in, in all of those images. You could have a couple of works and include detail, detail shots of some of those. So, um, uh, so again, 10 images, not 10 unique works necessarily, although you could do that if you wanted. Um, then you've got your resume or your CV um, and three professional references. Um, we would just need contact information for those folks. We're not, we're not asking for uh, letters of reference. So. Um, just contact information. Um, and then uh, again, as I mentioned before, the demographic survey um, is listed on the application as well. Um, yeah, and just a reminder, the short answer questions are kind of your opportunity to speak directly to the judges, like um, to the jury, uh, telling them why you feel like you would be a, uh, a good fit for this project or these projects. And again, the deadline is April 8th at uh, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. And with that, we'd be happy to answer your questions. Looks like we got a couple coming in in the chat. Sure. 
Um, okay, so I'll, uh, Kurt, I'll kind of go from the beginning and uh, feed you the questions and you can, we'll go from there. Okay, I've got a question. Um, uh, one question, I can actually answer this one. Um, it says, will we be able to get a recording of this meeting um, after? Uh, yes, we are recording this meeting and we'll be posting it on the um, AIPB opportunities page um, at austincreates.com. We'll also email out a link of the recording to everyone who signed up via Eventbrite. Um, so yes, you'll, you'll receive one in your inbox. Um, and then the next question is from Liz. She says, hi, I applied to essentially the same open call last year for public art at AFD EMS stations. Uh, would it make sense for me to use the same application? Is there a way to get feedback um, slash a way to improve it for this time around? Uh, I would say, um, thank you for the question, Liz, um, that um, if, if there's any site specificity that, that you could add to your application this time, if, um, you know, uh, obviously if, if, if you just applied very recently that, you know, your portfolio is going to be um, pretty close and your, your CD is probably very similar to, to it was the last time. But if there's anything in, in uh, these stations that, um, you know, that I think the questions that we have this time are a little bit different. So you might think about, um, you know, if, if you have any kind of connection to, to these or um, how you might want to answer those, um, you know, um, in, a, in a unique way, in a, in a site specific way. Yeah, and, and uh, Sue uh, was just bringing this up that in, in our staff chat that um, every jury is different. Um, and, you know, uh, a lot of you probably know this, uh, if you've gone through the public art process before, um, uh, it can be a bit more competitive than a grants process, right? And, um, and it kind of depends on the, uh, the jury each time. And so, yes, there will be a different jury. Uh, uh, for this for this call, which kind of ch changes uh, changes the equation a little bit, and um, um, it's just good to keep applying um, as well. Uh, and then uh, I just want to acknowledge: yes, uh, we had we had AIPP did have some. Um, we had actually six um, calls for AFD EMS projects a couple months ago. Um, so we're, we're kind of trying to batch them um, just because of the timing of those projects and the way the funding works. And I think we should have some um, hopefully coming up um, a little bit later too. So we just got a lot of AFD EMS projects going on right now. Um, and uh, to any artists who, who was submitted to the last um, call, um, feel free to reach out to, to staff if you have any other questions kind of similar to, to the last one as well. Um, I'll move on to the next question. Um, uh, it says, I am a 2D artist, um, so could the, uh, could the project be a mural? Um, I'll field that one. Um, I think uh, the, the short answer is yes. You know, I think that there's some stations in here that might lend themselves better to, uh, um, to 2D artwork. Um, if you were to be um, doing something, you know, at these budget levels, you might want to be doing it on working on a substrate or or you know uh, maybe incorporating mosaic. I don't want to you know uh, in, you know overly in, in, inform that, but but just think about the budget level and what you could do. Um, the um, you know some of these stations you're gonna if you want to do something on a wall, you might want to make sure that the that the wall is 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 more accessible. You know some of these stations, the uh, the buildings are set pretty far back and. It might be very hard to, to see a mural, but um, for instance, with the uh, the renovation projects, um, you know, it, it might be something that's um, there's more maybe more potential there with with uh, a sidewalk closer to the building. So, uh, short answer is yes. Uh, longer answer is, um, um, you know, if, if you were to be uh, the selected artist, um, you'd have to um, you know think about. Um, where the, where the opportunities to create mural art were. Kurt, can I interject something on that? Sure, yeah. Also, um, as, as an architect and the fact that I, I help manage, Michelle's the manager for all of these, but I know 
what's going on enough to be able to tell you that, and I know you've already been given the schedule outline, so it's, we're not gonna coerce or warp that or do anything with that, but it'd just be nice. If we are gonna do a mural, it would be nice to know as soon as possible what surface that mural might be on because we could help prepare for the mural to take place rather than us spending a lot of money in, in materials and things that maybe you don't even want for a mural situation. For instance, I heard, I saw somebody call, talk about painting over brick. Well, that probably would not be something we would want to do. If we knew you were gonna paint there, we might provide you a stucco surface or some more appropriate surface to paint on. And I, I know that all involves a lot of variables that we don't have control of right now, but I'll just throw that out. The sooner we would know that, the better off it'd be. Appreciate that, Barton. Yeah, I'll also say like, if you're a mostly a mural artist and mostly working in 2D, um, you know, you can, you can be hired uh, for this project, but I would encourage you if you're open to it, to be open to, um, you know, if selected, um, expanding your, the materials that you're, you know, willing to work with uh, for this project, like with the, for these projects with the budget. Um, we, we have definitely hired 2D artists to make 3D work in the past and staff is here to help you um, as you figure out your way through that process. Um, Sue, did you want to say anything else or I don't know? Uh, no, that sounded great, thanks. Okay. Thanks everyone. <laughs> Um, let's see, um, another question. Can you please elaborate on how to effectively uh, ref quote, reflect the mission um, to create uh, safer communities through prevention, preparedness and effective emergency response? Um, I would say uh, to, to elaborate a little bit more on that is that it's, uh, it's important for you in, as an artist during your design process or as maybe a prequel to your to your design process to be um, performing research that's inclusive of, of learning about um, the work that's performed by, by the first responders. You know, these, um, you know, the reflecting the mission of creating safer communities and through prevention, preparedness, and effective emergency response is, is really just as an artist um, learning what the work is that's, that, that, uh, um, that the folks who, um, work at these stations and serve these communities are doing and, and, uh, and um, you know, meditate on that as you're uh, creating your designs. But, that, but that's, um, you know, post-contract, you know, after uh, for, the, for the selected artists to, to really, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, the best public art is usually um, more than, than what winds up, um, you know, being installed or, or painted or, or what have you. It's, it's also um, partially a process that's inclusive of, um, of, of the, um, the staff of these buildings and the community they serve. Thanks, Kurt. Um, next question, what is not allowed, for example, painting onto the new bricks, et cetera? Um, I think we kind of answered this before um uh uh by, by Stan Burton's answer but um just to reiterate we don't we're not predetermining any of the sites you know the specific sites where each artwork is will be going at each location um and I'm just like you guys as artists it shouldn't necessarily have to be thinking about that as part of your application like we're not asking for proposals um and uh you're mostly just um applying with your qualifications as an artist Sorry, I kind of answered that, Kurt. Do you want to add anything else? No, it sounds perfect. Uh, and I can see the next question, so I'm going to go ahead and read it um, from Shalina. Uh, my proposal would be for an indoor artwork, which space offers, uh, which spaces offer an indoor space? Um, and I, I think that um, the opportunity might be at uh, station number one. Um, you know, if, if that's something that would be considered, it, um, there might be potential. Uh, inside the, the entrance area there. There's, there's a large window so the, the artwork could be seen from outside but be uh, enclosed. Um, and that's the, uh, uh, the station that has the, the museum uh, attached to it. So there's uh, a historical component and, uh, um, and a public 
uh, a publicly accessible area interior there. Um, Alex, Michelle, Burton, do you know of, of any other potential interior opportunities other than that one? I, I was going to add that they all have lobbies, um, but some are definitely, that one is definitely more, more visible uh, by design. So I, I guess it would kind of go back to the qualifications of being accessible to the public. So they all have um, front lobbies that the public can walk into. Thanks, Michelle. I was, gonna, I was gonna say that we kind of drive our designers, our architects and engineers to be, to make the most efficient use of the square footage inside the building as possible. So there, you will not find any dead spaces or open spaces that are not utilized. And uh, besides the one area that Kurt already mentioned, I don't think you'll find any place available inside these buildings, whether it's public or behind the, the curtain, if you will, that's uh, available for you to set something on the floor. There's probably some space up above your heads maybe for things, but again, that's, uh, that's usually in private areas. It's not in a public situation. So the ch chances of doing an interior work like that might be limited. Uh, thanks, Burton. Yeah, and just to reiterate, uh, we're not asking for proposals. I, I don't want to complicate things by mentioning, I, I did get an email that was asking about interior work and because station AFD1 EMS6 does actually have a potential for interior work, I did want to mention that as part of the info meeting. But um, again, I think as Kurt mentioned at the beginning of this, uh, of the info meeting, we do, AOPP does like to make sure that works are as accessible to the public as possible. And so I think these stations um, kind of lean more towards exterior works. Um, yeah, but, but and thanks everyone for their questions and answers too. Um, uh, next question, all types of work are welcome to apply. Are you open to use uh, technology or video? Can I feel that one, Alex? Sure. Um, the most important thing to remember um, with, with public artwork is that it, um, one of the important things to, to remember is that it be low or no maintenance. You know, the, the more that could go wrong with it, um, the less chance it has of, of having a long lifespan or, or succeeding. That said, um, we did just did complete a, uh, um, a work, a mosaic tile work that incorporates um, uh, programmed uh, LED lighting at uh, Rosewood Neighborhood Park on the bathhouse. It was uh, artist, uh, local artist Jane Muzak working with um, uh, tech-based uh, artist team of Polis, and um, you know we, we you know we really had to you know, um, you know put them put them through the motions to make sure that we were creating artwork that was going to be durable, um, that the uh, um, you know, went through a rigorous um, review process by conservators uh, who work in technology, and we were able to to make sure that um, that we were doing something that. Um, you know, was going to last a long time. You know, there were there were things during the design process that needed to come out. You know, some of the bells and whistles just weren't really feasible. Uh, you know, on the side of a building that's getting splashed with water. Um, but we were able to to land on um, you know a, a use of, of technology that, that we were relatively confident um, will um, will meet the needs of uh, of of, uh, of being low maintenance and last a long time. We, we really shoot for a uh, 20 year lifespan um, that goes down sometimes when you, you know, when you're trying to hook up a Raspberry Pi or like a, a Q server or something. But I would say that at this time, we're really not ruling out uh, any mediums. Um, you know, if, if, if you're a performance artist, this might be a, a tough one, you know, cause it's gotta be, we're using um, uh, public dollars. So it has to be something, uh, something uh, added to the built environment, um, but uh, for the most part, you know, we're at the with the with the dreaming stage right now. So I don't think that um, we're really ruling out um, any type of work, um, and we welcome all types of artists to apply. And as Alex said earlier, uh, you know, sometimes if if you're a studio artist, uh, public art is an opportunity to um, to branch out, maybe collaborate, and and 
uh, try something uh, a little bit different or, or build on your practice. Oh, you're on mute, Alex. Sorry, I was typing, so I muted myself. Um, next question, let's see. Um, and I think I can take this one. If you are accepted into the city's pre-qualified artist pool, do you somehow have an upper hand when applying to these open calls? Um, uh, so the answer is no. Um, the pre-qualified pool um, doesn't give you any extra weight to your application. Um, and we would, would not instruct the jury to, you know, uh, to, to give extra weight to, to, to um, your application when applying to other open calls. Um, I did want to note that uh, the pre-qualified pool, um, that application is a separate application through AIPP. Uh, we did extend the deadline to uh, March 7th, uh, which is not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. Um, it's listed on the same site that the AFD EMS call is, is um, listed on. So if you're interested in, in that uh, call, um, um, there is information uh, on uh, publicartists.org um, forward slash Austin AIPP. Um, and, and, and just to clarify, the pre-qualified pool is kind of a different selection tool than like when we would do an open call um, to the public uh, as we're doing for this AFD EMS call. So the pre-qualified pool will be used um, separately um, for, for calls that we would just release to the pre-qualified pool or um, use it in different ways um, uh, as well. Um, and if anyone has any questions about prequal, um, you can email me um, uh, after the meeting um, as well. And I can, I can help with any questions regarding that. Um, let's see. The, uh, again, the, the deadline for this call is April 8th. Yes. And, uh, Sue just posted a link to all of our open calls in the chat. Um, again, we use publicartist.org for, for all of our um, public art opportunities. Um, that's a listing of everything that's open right now. It's a good thing to subscribe to because you'll get emails whenever, um, whenever there's new calls, not just for us, but um, in other parts of the country, other parts of the state. Publicartist.org is based in San Antonio. Um, they're really great with customer service. If, if, you, if you're having trouble with the interface, they're very responsive to email and phone calls. Um, I believe that information is, is listed in the RFQ. Um, and it might be one slide back now that I think about it, or two slides back. Do you mean to go back? Yeah, why don't, why don't we take a peek at that real fast? This one? Oh boy, it might be like thumbnail size. But uh, yeah, it's like buried in there. Sorry about that. Um, it's, it's listed in, in the RFQ, and if anybody is wanting to reach out to publicartist.org, you're, you're pulling your hair out, trying to, um, you know, you're fighting with the interface itself. There, there's a little bit of a learning curve, um, um, you know, you, for first time users, but, um, but once you get the hang of it, once you have your, your images uploaded, it gets, it gets easier with, with, every, with every time that you use it. And, and just to clarify, it's a, it's a um, an application website for for multiple programs and multiple opportunities, not just us. So uh, if you if you're not currently signed up to it, it's a great way of learning about other opportunities um, that uh, that you can apply to. Thanks, Kurt. I think um, so. I think that's all the questions in the chat. But I saw. Um, uh, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, Bithya. I think. Maybe you had, a, you had your hand raised, you had a question. Feel free to type it in the chat or um, if you wanna come off mute, that's okay. We're kind of towards the end of the meeting. Um, and let's see. Um, and please anyone flag me um, in the chat if, if, I, if I missed your question um, in the mix. Um, uh, we just got another question in the chat, so I'll, I'll read that. Um, Oh, no, just a, just a, sorry, not a question, just a second, that public artist um, is really responsive. Um, yeah, and I, I will throw that, I, they're, they're a great team. Um, and and, and I, would, I, would, I would chime in that um, if you have questions about, um, you know, the, the questions or 
the images or, or things like that, you know, that, that you can ask Alex, you should ask Alex and I those questions. But if you're having trouble with the technology of applying that, um, that publicartist.org is, is, is best equipped to, to handle those types of questions. They know their, their software in and out and they, they know the pain points for first time users and are able to, to walk you through, um, you know, getting your, getting your application set up. Thanks, Kurt. Um, another question, uh, please give other examples of how to connect with the community near the stations. Um, I'd say, I'll, I'll go ahead and try and field this one. Um, again, we, we view community engagement as an early step in the design process. Um, and um, every community is different, just as you know, every artist is different. Um, there's, we've had, um, you know, I, I think some of the most successful um, community engagement methods we've seen are, are when when artists do workshops where they you know they have something open to be, that the community can do attend. Sometimes um, communities have public meetings, and sometimes it's useful just to go as a uh, be a fly on the wall and and just sort of listen in about you know the things that um, concern the community and um, you know things things that they're thinking about or or um, you know, hopes that they have. You know, maybe they're interested in, in, in some kind of development or you know, something like that. And, and uh, just sort of hearing um, who they are and what, the, what they're thinking. Um, the, you know, all of that is, is uh, you know, useful um, tools for, for, for doing community engagement. Um, but once, uh, once uh, an artist is selected and on contract, you know, we can, we can help guide you with, um, you know, some ideas as to um, um, community specific things that might work with, as is the case with uh, Onion Creek, we connected the Thought Barn artist team with uh, a high school teacher, an art teacher there, which, which led to the great community engagement that took place in, in her art classes and one of informing the design. Um, you know, that's just one example, but it all started with just uh, making making a community connection between the artist and and, and that teacher and um, and making um, you know and helping um, guide that process along. Um, but we we help the artist um, create the community engagement plan. It's you know you wouldn't be on your own. That's that's part of our job to to help connect you. And we have resources on how to um, do that socially distanced if 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 we're still socially distancing uh, in the fall when, when, when you start your initial engagement. Kurt, can I, can I jump in? And I, I just wanted to say that um, we also do a level of community engagement when we start our projects. So um, the neighborhoods that uh, are receiving Del Valley and Travis Country stations, um, they are, are very actively watching those stations. So, so we already have, um, I guess, an attentive audience uh, in those neighborhoods. And um, I think, you know, the downtown station, that, that's, you know, definitely a, a lot of opportunities there um, for outreach. And uh, I would say East Riverside, that's probably the only neighborhood we, we at least I have not um, done active uh, outreach for, but, um, you know, likewise, we're, we're happy to be part of that if it, if it yeah. helps IPP at all. Yeah, thank you for that, Michelle. It's, it's, it's always best to like, um, you know, have a continuity. Like if there's, if there's a community group that's been, been, that's been heavily involved with the building of the station itself to make sure that the same people who are, you know, um, most active and engaged in the process are, are provided an opportunity to meet the artist and and um, connect with them and, and, and share um, you know their thoughts. Um, I have a, a question from Liz: Are the districts considered uh, the community for each station, or does it go outside of the district to surrounding districts? Is there a list uh, what area stations uh, service? Sure. Yeah. The um, you know obviously um, you know fires and, and emergencies don't necessarily look at the district map and, 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 and go by border. Some of these stations, you know, um, you know, might obviously go outside of, um, 
of a, of a particular district, but they, they do have response zones and they do stay within that. Um, I don't have that information at my fingertips, but um, having talked to Fire and EMS before, you know, they, you know, they almost get out a compass and, and draw, uh, you know, a 10 mile circle around each station. And, and that's the, you know, who the, who the responder is, um, you know, for, for any emergencies um, in, in that area. Um, but the, um, you know, there's different ways of, of defining community. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it could be a neighborhood group, you know, if it's downtown that, it, that the, um, um, the community might look completely different than the residential neighborhood that sits behind Dell Valley. You know, it's, those are two very, very different types of communities. So, um, you know, once uh, an artist is, is, um, is uh, on contract, you know, we could, we could help you define, um, you know, what the community is or, or the most appropriate parties uh, for you to, to engage for, for that specific project. Hopefully that answers your question. Thanks, Kurt. Um, we do have a hand raise. Uh, Bithya, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. If you feel comfortable coming off of mute, um, uh, go ahead and, and ask your question. Um, I want to make sure that we answer everyone's questions. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to put like a name to my, well, a face to my name. But um, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a student currently at UT. And even though I'm not an Austin native, I have done a lot of work um, for the Austin community. Um, for the professional references, would you prefer that we um, have other prominent artists refer us? Or would you prefer that the people that we were contracted on behalf of um, like talk about us for the references? Thanks for your question um, and, and welcome. Um, uh, I'll just say, um, uh, so we're not asking for letters of reference. Uh, we just need uh, like a name, email address, phone number for those folks that we can get in touch um, with them. Um, we typically use those uh, around the interview stage. So uh, typically a jury will select finalists for each each site or each project. And then um, if necessary, we'll go into interviews with all those folks and then the jury will narrow down a recommended artist and alternate for each site. Um, uh, so just folks, um, the references are just for us to call kind of around, around that stage or around the contracting stage that we could call uh, then as well. Um, uh, in terms of like, oh, sorry. But there's no like, a uh, preference for like the references, like the type of people that you want. In terms of, of who to list, you could definitely um, uh, list anyone that that contracted you in the past that commissioned you to do work. Um, uh, I think that typically for references, it's kind of people that um, either work directly with you or kind of hired you for something. Um, uh, you know, if you're a student and maybe even uh, professors you've worked with as well. Um, if you've worked with them in kind of a professional artist, you know, hired capacity. Um, Kurt or Sue, do you have anything else that, you, that you'd want to add to that? No, I, I, I would say that if, uh, that if you're a student, um, you know, that if, if there's faculty um, that you would want to put down as references, if, if you haven't had um, uh, paid commissions before, that that, would, uh, that that would be somebody that could speak to your, um, you know, um, you as an artist. Um, and you know, um, and your ability to uh, um, to to, um, to do public artwork. This is Sue. I was just going to jump in. Um, I'll turn on my video so you can see me too. Um, I was just going to jump in and say um, the intent is really to sort of understand that we're um, expending public dollars responsibly, and so we want to make sure that. Um, we are engaging artists who will complete the work. And so we're really looking for um, a reference that could attest to your level of responsibility, um, your willingness to dig in and do the work and um, your sort of stick to in, in throughout the project. And so um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a work reference. That's always a good one because that's um, sort of apples to apples. It could be a professor, just somebody that, um, you know, some people that you could, um, that could easily attest to your ability to um, complete a job that you start. Thanks. Yeah. 
and and kind of as thank you too, and kind of as Kurt mentioned, those those timelines can be a little bit long, um, and sometimes they change too. So, um, uh, uh, so so you know, it's I guess kind of a Sue saying like it's um, it, it can be kind of a a longer process sometimes, and um, and we're there with you guys, you know, uh, with the selected artists like every step of the way too. So. Um, it's a kind of a group process too. Um, although the artist is the, the hired hired person. So um, thank you for your question. Um, um, and uh, so we are at 715. I'm gonna take um, maybe one or two more questions and then um, and then we'll uh, I, everyone else that is pretty familiar with public artists can sign off and then uh, Kurt and I will go on to uh, kind of more details about public artists and how to use it for those who want to stay on. Um, so uh, another question, if new to public art and larger scale projects, should you still apply? I would, can I answer that one? Yeah. I would say yes, absolutely. Um, there, we've, we've, there's four different um, projects here um, that um, and at all different budget levels. Um, if you're new to public art, you might be a better match for something with a lower budget than a higher budget. Um, but the, uh, um, but there's, um, you know, we're able to, um, you know, have, uh, artists who are, who are new to public art, um, eligible for consideration. So the short answer is, um, you know, you should still apply. Absolutely. Great. And I would second that. Um, all right. Any, any final questions? Last call. Appreciate everybody coming. And again, if uh, if you're a first time user of publicartist.org and want to hang around a little bit, we'll um, talk a little bit about um, what that application process is. Um, for the uh, for the other city staff that uh, were on the call, really appreciate you coming. Um, uh, Michelle and Burton, thank you so much for, for helping us answer some of the hard questions regarding uh, um, the, uh, uh, you know, the stations themselves. Uh, Penny, Sue, thank you so much for, for participating and, and helping us uh, get the best uh, um, info meeting that we can. Um, Alex, uh, it looks like you wanted to say one more thing. You posted something in the chat there. Yes. Um, uh... Uh, we do have a survey for you guys to take if you wouldn't mind taking just a couple minutes. Um, I, I have listed the link in the chat. Uh, that survey is just to let us know how we did um, uh, during the meeting and um, that we were providing you guys with the information that you were expecting and that uh, and whether or not you found what we were able to provide, provide helpful. And that can just help us um, know how we're doing and, and improve these meetings for the future. Um, uh, so with that, I just want to say thank you again. I know, and Kurt said this before, it's, it's been a challenging week this week. It was a, perhaps you know, it was an even more challenging week last week. So, so thank you guys for taking the time to be here. Um, we appreciate you all so much. And, um, if you don't have any more questions or, uh, about the publicartist.org process and want to sign off now, um, uh, feel free to do so. Um, and, and thank you guys all so much. Um, and, uh, and yeah. <laughs> Thanks again. Great, I'm gonna go on to the uh, yeah. next slide. Jump, jump to the next one. Yeah. Oops. And for anybody departing, if you, if you have any questions or anything, just uh, shoot us an email. Um, happy to answer any questions that, that you uh, popped into your head after, after the, uh, the main meeting. Um, so now we are going to shift to a little bit of a, um, a tutorial on, on how to use publicartist.org. Again, it's, it's uh, publicartist.org is a, a website that, that we pay to use to list our calls. Um, we don't operate it. Um, we don't really um, understand the back end code. Um, you know, that's really the job of, of the, the staff at publicartist.org. Um, we, we primarily work with uh, two individuals there named Jack and Crystal. Um, if you if you send emails or questions to them, oh, there's the technical um, 
contact information. It's the bottom of this slide. Um, if, if you have problems and you reach out to them, it's, it's usually, you know, Crystal or, or Jack that, um, that respond and um, very responsive. Um, they can answer most technical questions. We don't want people to be, you know, um, beating their heads against the wall, trying to figure out how to use the system. But the, I think the most important thing to, um, to understand about it for first time users that, um, that publicartist.org is where you apply to several different calls. And the starting process for doing that is to create a profile. Um, you go in and you'll enter in your name and your email address. Uh, I think it starts asking you some questions which, which you'll complete. But the, um, as it relates to applying to things, an important step there um, during that early process is to um, create an, an image bank of pictures. And in publicartists.org, um, they call them projects. Like you'll, if you have a, let's say you have a, a sculpture that you did in 2015 that, that you're really proud of. And um, you'll create a, a project um, in that, um, you know, in the image bank, you will uh, describe that work. Um, you'll enter in the materials, the name of it, the year that it was done. Um, and, um, then uh, you'll be ready to upload pictures related to that specific project. Um, and, you know, if it's, if it's all pictures of the same project, of the same sculpture, you know, you can upload 10 images of just that one sculpture, getting details, getting angles, getting um, people interacting with it uh, for scale. Um, and then when you apply, you will, um, um, you know, decide which your images in your bank that you want to, uh, um, to, to uh, attach to that application. Um, the um, uh, one thing I wanted to point out is that uh, make sure to scroll all the way down to the bottom of, of the screen. If you see these blue arrow, arrows on the third slide here, that's to indicate the, where you actually upload images. Sometimes the screen cuts off right before, you see that there's a big, uh, big blank area right above that. And sometimes that's where the screen cuts off and, and first time users have a hard time figuring out where they're supposed to upload the images. Just make sure you're scrolling down and, and there'll be a prompt, It'll, you know, when you upload things from your, from your hard drive. Um, there was a question as to uh, how, how uh, recent of work is needed from Liz. Um, I'd say um, that it's really, that's really flexible. You know, if, um, if it's hard for me to get into the heads of the jurors, how important that might individually be to them. You know, some jurors wanna make sure that you've, um, you know, completed, you know, that you've had a, you know, continuous work, that there's not any gaps. Usually in public art, that's not as important as people, you know, uh, with, with a studio practice, um, it's not, as deeper of a consideration. If you have something that you did a long time ago that you feel is, is um, you know, um, relevant to this call in, in some way, then I'd say that nothing is too old for inclusion. Um, you, you wouldn't necessarily um, completely change your, your slides out every year in the way that you do sometimes when you're um, you know, showing images to uh, a curator and making, sh making sure that the work is always fresh, you know, where, where public art is, you know, art that's supposed to last, you know, it, it, it we define it permanent as, is at least 20 years. So, you know, it's not necessarily, the jurors typically don't look at something for being, you know, of the moment or the newest thing, you know, it's, it doesn't necessarily, it can be something um, older in your portfolio isn't going to be uh, a strike against necessarily. Do, do you want to add anything to that, Alex? Um, no, not really. I think uh, maybe just that um, kind of to expand on you saying that older work um, is, is still pretty viable. Um, and I think maybe one of the reasons for that is because process is so important, right? Like engaging the, how you engage the community, you know, for a public artwork or how you 
worked with a commissioning body, you know, for public artwork, like those skills are still very applicable, even if it was many years ago. So, um, so yeah, just agree with what, what you said. Yeah. And, and once you've had your, your profile created and your images uploaded, then you're ready to, to apply to our call or, or any others that you see that, that you're interested in. So it's, it's a little bit of a two-step process. You, you can't apply to the call until you have the profile made and the images uploaded. Sometimes, um, you know, um, it's beneficial to, to start the application and, and complete what you can and upload what you can and, and have it in there pending and work on it, you know, between now and the deadline and hit the submit button, um, you know, after and not, not wait until, you know, April 1st to start. It's beneficial um, to, to start it, it, you know, at an earlier opportunity and, you know, and just do a little bit, little by little bit until you hit submit. Um, something you should know is that we can see pending applications. Um, Sometimes, you know, we send, uh, you know, emails to people, you know, like, oh, hey, saw you started an application, just wanted to make sure you knew that the deadline was, you know, Thursday, or, hey, saw you had a pending application, it's the call is going to be extended, so you got a little more time, you know. Um, so just know that if you have a pending application in there, um, that, um, that, that we could see it. Um, sometimes, uh, people call us and, and ask us to, to look at something. Uh, we can, you know, so we can share the same screen. We can look at the same screen together. If you, if you call us or email us a question, we can, we can see what it is you're talking about. If it's, if it's part of the application that you've completed. Um, but the, um, you know, um, but uh, I think the most important thing with using publicartist.org is to create that profile get the images uploaded and then you're ready for for applying to the call um, a lot of times images people say those to last so technically you i think maybe you could start your application before you have your images done um, or maybe you want to you know get different documentation of something um, that you want to share or you don't have documentation quite yet of something that's in progress um, you know, there's there's flexibility there, but um, but the uh, you know the uh, the images are is usually where the steepest learning curve is in this process um, for for, um, for first time applicants. It's getting that that image bank, those projects set up, and pulling those images over into the individual you know city of Austin AFD EMS application. And it's one common application for all four opportunities. Um, you're not, you don't have to apply to four stations. Um, you just be doing one common application. If you're interested in, you know, one station more than others, you know, you can you can mention that in the questions. Um, you know, the the prompts um, that ask you, you know, why you're interested in in, in doing the artwork. Um, I think. Uh, that's, uh, I think that's everything that I had wanted to impart. I had, you know, I don't want to throw so much information at you that you're, you're overwhelmed because, you know, first time using the system, you know, that, um, you know, you have to kind of get in there and, and think around. It's, it's, it's not super hard, but there is certain things that aren't necessarily intuitive. Um, and again, we're happy to, to help you, um, you know, figure out our application and, uh, Jack and Crystal at publicartist.org are, are really great to, to reach out to if you're having problem with the interface itself. And uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to pop off mute or type it in the chat. Um, if we don't see any in the next minute, I think we're going to let you go eat a late dinner or whatever you we're going to do. Before instead of this. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing any questions come into the chat. Um, I know we, we kind of went over the, the hour, but hopefully you guys found that information useful. Um, and yeah, with that, maybe we'll, we'll just wrap it up. I'll put Kurt and my email addresses uh, back up on the screen. Uh, just know that you're welcome to reach us, 
reach out to us at any time um, uh, with any questions. And uh, yeah, with that, we'll say good night. Um, uh, and look for a recording or an email from us um, at some point in the next week or so uh, when we're able to get the recording of this meeting um, up on uh, the city's website or up on YouTube. Um, we will send that link to you guys directly when uh, when it's posted. Um, and and yeah, just reminded the the deadline's April eighth. And uh, again, please reach out to us with any questions. And thank you. <laughs>